All right, guys. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can achieve uh, rendering in EV on an HDRI or uh, a backplate as an image, if you know what I mean. So let's get started on this. This isn't actually too difficult. I came up with an easy way to actually achieve this. But uh, since this, uh, since EV is actually just a ray tracing engine and not a uh, realistic, it's not as realistic as a uh, uh, what do you call it cycles you might not actually get the results as close as you want it to look like in real life so you might actually uh, when you go through this process okay we're going to be rendering two different images for this and uh, you know let's get started so I explain on the way so the first thing that we want to do you have your obviously you have your model and then this is your camera right so set up your camera the way you want to go over to the camera tab, add in a backplate or an image a background image which is what you're seeing right now and I've set the alpha to a full one, just like that. And now I've loaded in a, an HDRI of that backplate in here as well. So just find that backplate. Uh, this HDRI that I'm using, I actually found on HDR Maps, as you can see right here, hdrmaps.com. You can get that HDR over there. So just load in whatever HDR you want to use, and let's get started on this. So if you take a look up here, you can see that I have my uh, collections over here and uh, the main body and the other collections now this collection right here is the ground which is the plane that is going to act as the ground so i'm going to select that collection i'm going to add in a new plane all right so i'm going to reset the rotation and scale this up to be big as big as it could be just like that and i'm going to go down here and i'm going to add in new material to this and i want this to be a full black all right so i don't want it to be of any color but dark and i'm going to increase the roughness to a full one i don't want it to be reflective at all just like that and now let's not forget let's change the engine to ev because that's what we want to achieve it in so let me go into material preview and uh let's take a look at this all right so you can see the glass and everything is set up if you don't know how to set up your glass in ev i have a separate video on that if you if you want to watch it just click on the eye icon eye icon up there to take you to that video so you can uh, learn how to uh, create glass in ev so to continue with this, we've already set up everything. We've set up the material and everything. And uh, right now you can see I have some shadows going on, all right? So right here I have some shadows going on. That is pretty easy. All you have to do is go over to the uh, render properties over here and enable ambient occlusion right here. Okay, so once you enable ambient occlusion, you get that uh, feature shadow showing over there. And now the distance is going to define how far your shadow goes or how dark is going to get away from your model, all right? So just like that, as you can see, it's affecting it as I decrease and increase the uh, distance. So just go with whatever distance you want to go with. I think 3 would be good or something. Any amount you want to go with, you think it's fair enough for you, you can just go with that. All right. So right now, that is what I have going on. You can see I have only one layer here, up here, which is the foreground. Uh, just make sure you have that going on. And all these are enabled in the foreground, including the ground uh, collection here. Alright, so once we've done that, all we're going to do is we're going to set the render sample for the uh, EV. That is the sampling here. We're going to set it to whatever amount we want. I went with 100. And then what we're going to do is we're going to render it out. Okay, so once you have everything going on like this, you're just going to render this whole image out just like that. Just tweak the shadow to get the amount of shadow you need. Get everything as you want it. And then just click on the render and render image. Alright, so that should bring up the I mean, you should render out the image for you just the way you want it to. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it again. And now we're going to move on to the second stage. That is rendering the second image. Of course, you need to save the first image somewhere. All right, just save it up somewhere. Obviously, you know how to do that. Or if you don't know how to do that, just go over to your. Uh, let me show you real quick. In case you don't know how to do that, let me just go in here. Once your image is start uh, is finished rendering, what you want to do is click on image here, and you want to click on save us. All right. So when you click on save, it's going to bring up a, uh, what do you call it, a window for you to s select the location where you want to save the image. Just select the location and save the image in there and you're good to go. Now the next thing we're going to do is to create the next image that we need, which is the shadow. All right. In this case, it's going to be the shadow. So we're going to go over, let me just go into render view. It's all the same. So we're going to go over to this side up here, all right, so to the scene collection over here. Now, in the scene collection here, you can see we only have this uh, icon over here to enable and disable the object. Now, we have to add in some other uh, icons to be able to make this work. So, I'm, I'm just going to click up here, get a filter. And I'm going to bring, is it a filter? Yeah, the filter, I think. So, we're going to bring up the uh, holdout. Is it the holdout, I think? Is it disable or holdout? 
Not so sure. Let me see. It's the uh, the reason why I'm actually taking this slowly is because I have a uh, something overlaying on top of the uh, that thing I'm supposed to be looking at. So I can't actually see the icons right now. So I'm just hovering my mouse over it and then reading whatever shows up here to tell me what I'm looking at. So yeah, I think this right here is the holdout. So you want to enable that right here to enable the holdout, okay? So enable the holdout filter right there. And now we're going to click on this, okay? So we're going to, because if we simply hide this, you can see the ambient occlusion is not going to show up on the tires on the side here, okay? Let me show you what I mean real quick. Take a look at it right now. You can see the light is not really... Uh, shining on it right now, but if I hide this, you can see the light instantly shines on the tire, and that is going to give you unrealistic results when you're done. So just bring that back. All you got to do is enable holdout. All right, so just enable holdout. You can see the shadows are still there, but the object has been taken out. Simple as that. Now, all, once you do that, all you want to do next is to hit render and render that image as well. All right. So once you have all that, all that we're going to do next is to go over into compositing, and now we're going to use the notes and once you click on use notes you should have your your render output over here but i don't have that so i'm going to put that in compose it and i'm going to add in i'm going to add in the uh, image in your case you should have a render layer or something here but if you don't have it and you want to use the image of course you need to save the second image as well save that one as well to in the same location as you save the first one because we're going to use both and i want to press it to a and add in an image real quick so we're gonna add in an image here and then what we want to do is we want to set let me just put that over here I'm gonna shift and D this up here like this and I'm gonna open this one go over to wherever I saved this which is on my desktop I want to find it I think it's this one right here okay so I'm gonna load that in real quick and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a color ramp converter color ramp down here and I'm gonna set this to uh, ease right here and I'm going to drop this down to about this point. Now I'm going to set this into the factor of that composite, I mean the uh, color ramp node. And I want to take a look at this through the viewer node. Alright, so the viewer is going to show us what we're looking at. And as you can see, this is what we're going for. Like that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is I want to drop this even further down closer to this. Okay, so I have the white areas being much less, uh, I mean much more like this, as you can see just like that and now what I want to do is I'm going to add in an alpha over in the uh, color alpha over I'm going to set that in here and let's open this image to be the backplate that we loaded into the camera all right so we're going to load that backplate in I think I have it in HDR maps right here it's this backplate over here so I'm going to load that in and I'm going to set that to the top I think the top of the alpha over I'm not so sure but let's set this to the bottom and let's see what we're looking at all right so that is working out. Now we're going to use this exact same image we're seeing here. We're going to use this as the factor of that alpha over. Now let's take a look at this. All right, I'm not getting any result right now, and I think it's okay. Yeah, we're not looking through this. Let's set this into the viewer to see this. All right, that's not bad, but I think we have to invert it. I think. Let me take a look. Uh, let me bring this back all the way here and let me add in a an invert. Let me see color invert right here. I'm gonna set that into the factor. Is it the factor? No. Yeah, the factor. So I'm gonna set that into the factor just like that. And yeah, I think we have everything else showing, but this side is obviously black. We do not want that. I need to take a quick let me see. Uh, let me set this to this. Let me see what that looks like. Yeah, so there we go. This is what I was trying to achieve <coughs> to isolate only the uh, <coughs> the shadow, as you can see. So I just set the image here that we loaded into the bottom of that alpha over, and the background. I mean, the back place is on the top, and then I use the color ramp to create a uh, a uh, sort of an alpha for this to set. The alpha of that alpha over very nicely like that so you can actually tweak this uh, black mark over here to uh, control how dark your shadow is 
So I'm just going to increase this maybe twice just to decrease that shadow a bit more to make it look realistic. Just like that. Now all we're going to do is to add in a final image. So let me just duplicate this over here. And I'm going to open it and find the image, the second image that we rendered out, which in your case would be this one. Okay, the one without the shadow. Now all that we're going to do is we are going to add in another alpha over. Obviously we have one here, so we're just going to duplicate it and move it over here. I want to set this to the bottom and that one to the top, like that. Now we don't need any, uh, what do you call it, alpha for this because it's already uh, having an alpha channel with it. So once you set that in, you can see the result popping out very nicely. And yeah, that looks great. And obviously it doesn't look as great as it would look in cycles, but uh, you can actually compose this a bit further to make it look even more realistic. Obviously the shadow isn't looking too realistic, but uh, if, you follow, if you follow the tutorial to this point, you can actually do a few more things to make it look much more realistic. This is just to show you how you can go about achieving something like this, okay? So you can go further and add in a, uh, I don't know, maybe a color balance or let me start with a color correction, all right? So I'm going to set that into the viewer. Let me move this all the way here. And let me increase the saturation to something like 1.2, all right? I want to make the saturation a bit more to match the backplate we have going on. And uh, let me see. The contrast, I'm going to keep right there. Now let me add in a brightness and contrast node right here. I'm going to set each of them to 0.5, all right? Both the brightness and the contrast, both to 0.5 like that. And now one final thing we want to do is to add in a color balance node right through here. Now I'm going to increase this to some blue or whatever filter you want to add in. And let's increase the, the brightness a bit up like that, okay, just to make it, give it some uh, whitish uh, look filter on it. Just like that. Alright, so this is just something basic. Obviously, it's not going to look as great as you'd achieve with uh, cycles, but it's pretty close. Maybe just for some showcasing and all that, but if you're using this for animation, and you're not going to be using any background or backplate for this. You can actually go with your world scene. You can just uh, add in an HDR image and then just enable ambient occlusion and you're good to go. You can animate in Blender. We're using an HDRI with just an ambient occlusion enabled. Of course, it needs to be an HDRI that matches the ambient occlusion because uh, you can see the ambient occlusion gives you sort of soft shadows, so you don't want to use an HDRI that produces hard shadows. It would look unrealistic. All right, so that is basically how you achieve uh, shadows on HDRIs with EV. Once you're done, you can save your image and you are done. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video.